as an avid traveler, there are a lot of places I want to see, but just not enough time to see them all. That's why I'm embarking on a new adventure, to visit as many places as I can in as little time as I can. Welcome to my In A Day series, where I take a very quick trip to show you some of the coolest places in the country in, well, just the day. Good morning everyone, the time is around 11.30 a.m. I'm here at the 30th Street Station in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And today we have our latest installation for our In A Day series, this time here in Philly. Now unlike the other places I've been so far in the series, I was actually able to bring the train this time up a couple hours north of DC, and I'll actually take the train back home this evening. So this is truly In A Day, and I'm excited to see all the things that we can here in Philadelphia. Walking north along the river walk up to some of the parks and some of the other things that are here along the river. Then we'll make our way into downtown and some of the historical sites that you can see here in Philadelphia. So this is known as the Schuylkill, again, hopefully I'm not butchering the name of that, uh, River Park, River Trail. And there are along the trail here, there's a lot of folks out running, jogging this morning, riding bikes. There are places uh, that you can sit down with benches here along the way and just sit alongside the river and take in some of the views. So for just a bit of wayfaring so far where we're at and where I'm walking, right over there, uh, you can see in the center of the screen is the 30th Street Station. That's where the Amtrak comes into. It's the primary station here in Philadelphia for Amtrak. So if you are arriving by train, that's likely where you're gonna be coming to. There's a bridge right out in front of it. That's the bridge I was walking across. That's the John F. Kennedy Boulevard Bridge. There are stairs at the end of that bridge when you get on the downtown side of the river to come down to the river trail, and that's where I am now. The interstate over here is Interstate 76, so you see a lot of traffic over there. And then 676 uh, is what we're gonna cross under here. So now we've reached our first site to see here in Philadelphia. Behind me here you can see the Philadelphia Museum of Art. We'll get to that in just a minute. What I wanted to remark on is right here. This is actually known as the Washington Monument. It doesn't look like the Washington Monument, does it? But it's Philadelphia's version of a monument to George Washington. So while the obelisk gown in DC is certainly the more well-known of the two, this is technically known as the Washington Monument. So I guess nothing quite says our nation's first president likes some moose. Uh, there's a bear over there. There's a topless lady there. And then above all that is George Washington. Now out here in front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and these are the famous Rocky Steps that Rocky Balboa ran up and down in the movie. And just over there is actually, just to the right of the stairs is a statue of Rocky, which we'll go check out. Let's, uh, we, I guess we have to go up the steps, right? That seems to be what everyone's doing. Everyone's running up them, but you're not gonna see me running on this channel. So made it to the top of the Rocky Stairs and back behind me here you can see the skyline of Philadelphia. Now we're going to head down there into downtown and check out some of the sights we can see down there. Benjamin Franklin Parkway is the road I was taking from the Philadelphia Museum of Art over into downtown and along the way here I actually saw this. This is Auguste Rodin's The Thinker, the famous statue. The original is actually in Paris, France at his gravesite, but there is one here, a second that he made of the bronze statue and it's located here in Philadelphia. So pretty neat to see that here. They do have around Philadelphia these Indigo bikes. These are like the capital bike share in DC. 
and I know a lot of other major US cities have these as well so just wanted to point out that they do have these available for you in Philly now one thing about Philadelphia there are a lot of museums uh, a lot of art galleries a lot of libraries things like that it reminds me of DC a lot in that regard over there is the Franklin Institute built in honor of Benjamin Franklin and then around here on this side of the street this is the free library and there are some museums down that way as well. taking a stroll through Sister Cities Park, which is a celebration of the Sister Cities of Philadelphia. Of course, every city has named Sister Cities. However, I don't know that I've seen a city that's designated a whole park uh, to honor those Sister Cities. So that's pretty unique and cool that Philadelphia has done that. And they do have a map here in the middle of the park showing what some of those Sister Cities are. Cities like Florence, Italy, Tel Aviv, Israel, Frankfurt, Germany and other cities in China, South Korea, Cameroon, Russia, Japan, and France. Philadelphia is known as a city of brotherly love and behind me here you can see the famous love statue and it's here in Love Park well of course that's the name uh, right here almost in the center of downtown Philadelphia now there is a line you can see it extending behind me here it was the same way over at the Rocky statue too a lot of folks waiting to get their picture made so uh, anticipate if you are coming in the more touristy times of the year that you're gonna have to wait to see a lot of these things interesting fact Mother's Day was founded by Anna Jarvis of Philadelphia and it was first officially observed in 1908 so Mother's Day sort of had its roots and origin right here in uh, Philadelphia the city of motherly love am I right so now we've walked just east of the city hall you can see it there in the center of the frame just down the street and now we're in a lot of the restaurant and shops and store district of downtown right across the street there is the Pennsylvania Convention Center so uh, if you're looking for something to eat, something to drink, a place to sit and relax here in central downtown, uh, just east of City Hall, you're on Market Street. All right, so all you history buffs out there, get ready. We're about to get into the historical section of Philadelphia. So uh, if you're not into that, you might want to skip a bit through this part but uh philadelphia of course is a very historical city largely surrounding the independence of the united states so we're still here on market street city hall is back up that way making our way down towards independence hall and here is the declaration house and this is where thomas jefferson actually pinned the declaration of independence right here on this site in this house back in 1776 Okay, so this isn't actually the house itself. This was actually reconstructed back in the 70s by the National Park Service to sort of restore what would have been the house back to what it would have looked like. But this is very much what it would have looked like when Thomas Jefferson was here. Uh, this would have been just outside the hustle and bustle of downtown Philadelphia in that day back in 1776. So it provided a place for Thomas Jefferson to come and, and really think about what he was writing uh, and really just be to himself. So this is the site 
where the Declaration of Independence was largely penned. So welcome now to Independence Historical National Park. This area of Philadelphia actually contains Independence Hall, where of course the Declaration of Independence would have been signed. Having neither principles of right action, or the bowels of convention, now, Philadelphia served as the nation's capital from 1790 to 1800 before Washington, D.C. ever became the nation's capital. So behind me here is the president's house, or what's left of it. Would have been where George Washington lived when he first became the president of the United States. And you see a lot of the house over this way, and then they have this display here. And this would have been, I think, probably a bottom level or lower level of the house. This would have been where Washington's slaves lived. Washington actually brought slaves went and had them brought from Mount Vernon, just outside of Alexandria, Virginia, here to Philadelphia so that they could serve him when he was president and living in the president's house in Philadelphia. This here is the Liberty Bell Center, so you see a lot of folks lined up. Pretty big line that extends all the way back here toward Independence Hall, folks waiting to get in to see the Liberty Bell. There's actually an outdoor cutout here that you can look inside the building there and see uh, the Liberty Bell right in there. You see folks inside are taking photos right up against it. You can actually see the crack in the Liberty Bell from that vantage point. But if you don't have time to wait in the line, just remember you can come up here just behind the line and there's actually a, a little window vantage point to the inside where you can see the Liberty Bell. So we've made it now to Independence Hall. Of course, this is the site where on August the 2nd, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed. It was also the location of the first and second Continental Congresses where the U.S. Constitution was developed. Now, while the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution were drafted here, you cannot find either of those documents in Philadelphia. Those documents both reside down in Washington, D.C. in the National Archives. So don't go around looking to see copies of those, but you can see the original copies if you visit DC. The Liberty Bell is notable because it actually used to be up there in that bell tower. Just a few minutes ago, you might have heard on one of the clips, the bell towing that it was uh, 2 p.m. here in Philadelphia. The Liberty Bell actually used to be the bell that was up there. And when they were making progress on the independence of the country, they would actually ring the bell and the bells of the city. And that was one of the most notable bells that would ring to note that progress was being made toward the independence of the United States as its own free country. Now we're on the back side of Independence Hall in Independence Square, and as if you notice, they have a lot of the area blocked off. You can't actually get very close to Independence Hall itself. Now you can go inside, however, I didn't do enough planning in advance to be able to go inside, but you can go on recreation.gov in advance. I don't know how far in advance they released the tickets, but I looked yesterday and there were none for my visit. If it's the same way as they do the Washington Monument in DC, I know it's, I think, 24 hours in advance. So maybe yesterday morning I should have gone on to get tickets for today. At any rate, go on recreation.gov and look for Independence Hall and it'll tell you how you can get tickets. I think they also give out same day tickets at like 8.30 in the morning. But that's the only way you're gonna get in. This is operated by the National Park Service, the same as all the monuments and memorials and things in DC. So here is the Carpenter's House, which was built in 1774, and it housed a lot of the early discussions about the organization of the United States. So 
also a lot of the country's first legislators and the founding fathers, per se, of the country would have met here in this house. Actually, this is Carpenter's Hall. I don't, that was just an adjacent building, I guess, but this uh, would have been also where the first Continental Congress would have met for some of their early deliberations. This is the Museum of the American Revolution and it is a ticketed museum and now you probably have to have some sort of a timed entry as well. Sitting here on the southern end of Independence National Park, I think the American Revolution Museum makes the southern border of that, but there's a lot of old buildings down here and in these buildings now are a lot of restaurants, there's some bars down here, so keep that in mind when you get this far down here and you've made the long trek that you can always get something to eat or drink down here as there are a lot of establishments available for that. We're now reaching the eastern border of downtown Philadelphia, the Delaware River, and now we're entering the Penn's Landing area. So let's check this out. So back down there is I-95, which of course runs up the eastern seaboard from Miami, Florida, all the way up connecting the major cities from Washington, D.C., all the way to Boston into the northeast. And then there you see that large bridge is the Benjamin Franklin Bridge, and it connects Philadelphia and eastern Pennsylvania with New Jersey, which is just on the other side. If we look back here, you can see uh, Philadelphia. You can see the top of the skyline there. So really good views from down here. back behind me here is the Delaware River which is the eastern border of the city just across the Benjamin Franklin Bridge over here is the state of New Jersey so this is as far as we can come in our trek through the city of Philadelphia we've came all the way from that 33rd Street station all the way through the downtown portion of the city and across it there still are some things to see though and now we're gonna head back into the city and catch some of those so headed westward now back into downtown Philadelphia it is about 3.30, so that's, you know, from when I got here 11.30 till now, that's about how long it took me to get all the way through the city and see all that we've seen up to this point. Now, I did take several breaks where I just sat down for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes because it is very hot today and it's a lot of walking. So there's a more significant line up there where we were earlier where we saw the Liberty Bell uh, through that window on the outside. And then here's the line currently to get in to see it on the inside. Uh, looks probably about 30 or 45 minutes given that it's about 340 now i don't think i'm gonna wait it closes at five So here at the other end of Independence Park, and you can see for 
wayfinding down there is Independence Hall. So all the way over here is the National Constitution Center. Now we've made it to Reading Terminal Market. So we're gonna go in here and, uh, and check this out. It's now almost 6 o'clock p.m. Took a couple hours of a break because the rain was just pouring down. So now headed to the Eastern State Penitentiary, which was at one time, when it was built back in the 1800s, the largest public building ever built in the United States. The prison actually served as a model for over 300 prisons worldwide. Uh, it's been closed since 1971, but one of the most notable prisoners kept at the facility was Al Capone. So there it is, the Eastern State Penitentiary, and it was actually opened in 1829. I looked that up on the walk up the hill. So that was just a brief look at Eastern State Penitentiary, and I will say this place is amazing to see. It's worth a whole trip for me. So I think it's the best part of my day, the best thing I saw in Philadelphia. So I would highly recommend, if you have time, make it part of your visit, your day in Philadelphia. The time is now about 7.45, and I actually have to head back to the Amtrak station downtown to catch my train. If you wanna see more about the Eastern State Penitentiary, be sure to check the channel later on this fall and I'll post a full walkthrough that I recorded. But now back here to 30th Street Station where it's time for me to catch my train in just 30 minutes and head on out of Philadelphia. But it's been a great day. If you have time to see Philadelphia in a day, I highly recommend it. It probably only takes, uh, you know, five hours. It, everything's pretty accessible and walkable here in Philadelphia. So if you do have the time, if you ever find yourself uh, on a layover if you just want to bring the Amtrak in the station is right here downtown so highly recommend it thank you all so much for watching if you're enjoying this in a day series so far or maybe this is the first one you've watched please make sure to subscribe because we have more to come including our next stop on our in a day series a city that I know very well are actually going to break the mold a little bit I've been going to all these cities that I've never been to before but I've actually been to our next city quite a few times we're going to go to the capital of my home state Music City USA I'm talking about Nashville Tennessee on our next stop, so make sure you check that out coming soon. Thank you all again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next adventure.